Thursday night at the Old Ball Yard. The Rockies and Giants concluding this three-game set for the Rockies. They conclude a nine-game homestand. Mixed clouds and blue skies overhead as Jorge De La Rosa marches to the mound. Rockies and Giants have already met a bunch this year. The Rockies are seven and eight against San Francisco. One more three-game set to come late September in the Bay Area. Eduardo Nunez will lead things off again for San Francisco, and here is the Southwest batting order for Bruce Bochy tonight after the Giants prevailed 3-2 to two last night. He'll have Angel Pagan in the two spot. Buster Posey's back behind the plate. He played first yesterday. Hunter Pence, a 308 lifetime hitter against De La Rosa. And then it's Hernandez, Brandon Belt, Crawford batting seventh, Kelby Tomlinson at second base batting eighth. Trying First pitch with, of the ball game missed ball one. Trying to go with a lot of the right-handed bats like they did last night against Tyler Anderson. One ball, one strike as we take a look at De La Rosa's most important numbers, eight and seven. But since, with that ERA down below five. Well, that's because in this 15 start since returning to the rotation, he's six and three with a 346 ERA. So that's why it's going down. This is going to be interesting tonight with his arsenal that we've talked about because behind the plate you have Tom Murphy who's never caught him before. So let's look for that early on, see how many shakeoffs we get, see what he what he feels like he wants to throw in that, and he meaning Jorge De La Rosa. On the ground, deep in the hole and on through. So a base hit for Nunez. Here's the Rockies defensively. We mentioned uh, that Tom Murphy's doing the catching, making his second start since being called back to the big leagues from Albuquerque with the roster expansion. Dahl Tapia and Gonzalez, yep. Cargo, or excuse me, uh, Blackman is still out. Tapia making the start out there, but Charlie's getting real close. He took batting practice out on the field today. Would not be shocked <laughs> to see him in the lineup tomorrow in San Diego. Just tell with Charlie's demeanor when he was out there today that he was feeling better, bouncing around a lot more. Got to watch Nunez. He takes off first pitch, 34 stolen bases, and a throw, not going to get him. So Nunez goes on the first pitch, and that is something that's been an issue all year for De La Rosa. Yeah, he's had that one game in, in Cincinnati where they stole five bases on him. They, Nunez just takes off immediately, even with the slide step. He goes in with the head first dive. But then the throw is off the mark. DJ has to go out and around on the Subaru Super Mode, does not come close to tagging Nunez. And for Nunez, you mentioned it, Drew, the 34 stolen bases, now 35. He'd come into the game with the fifth, fifth most in the major leagues. He's playing on third base. And you don't usually associate a speed demon with a third baseman. Ball and a strike on Pagan. It's a 70th stolen base for the Giants. But God, just seven for his last 50 at the plate. De La Rosa settles in again on that rubber, gets a sign from Murphy. Center field, tagging, and here's Tapia. We get to see his arm. But he's not going to be able to come close to preventing Nunez from moving up 90 feet. One out. And that'll bring up Posey in an RBI situation. Tapia made sure with that throw that he kept it low. Didn't try to airmail it, didn't try to show off the arm where it would skip into the dugout. Keep it low. You know that Nunez is going to get to third base, but don't, don't make an extra mistake. Buster Posey has hit 12 home runs, driven in 62, and this will get the job done. Nunez waiting and he'll cruise home. Kind of a jog home and 
The Giants build a run in the first on a single, a stolen base, and a couple of fly balls. Manufactured runs 101. When you get in with the base hit, steal first pitch, fly ball to advance, and then a sack fly by Posey. 63 RBIs for Posey. Pence up there, two outs, nobody on. Showed you when we were looking at the Southwest lineup that Pence owns a couple home runs lifetime against De La Rosa. Had Dougie look this up, Horry's given up a lot of stolen bases for a lefty, and I was wondering, is it the most in baseball? And actually, He's fourth among left handed starters. He's allowed 15 stolen bases, which is a lot. It's a high number. Especially for a left hander. How about this? You're going to be surprised at this one. John Lester is having a great year with the Cubs, but he can't pick the first. That's why. And, and everybody knows it. He, ha he does not he pick the first. He's got the, he's got the thing. So I guess first base. on one hand, you, you're surprised, but you're not surprised. I was just saying because this is down the line. Nolan pops to his knees. At first base. It was close. What a play by Arenada. What a stretch at first by Parra. Dive. How about that stretch at first? I see Nolan dive to his left, dive to his right, and then from his knee, make that throw all the way in the air. That's a great, great stretch by Parra. Ow is what it is. Ouch. They're going to take a look at this. And you know what? You can see the base move up. Yeah, he may have gotten his foot down. And if he does, if, if they do overturn this, it's because Hunter Pence steps on the front part of the bag, not on top of the bag. How about that? I'm still marveling at the stretch by Parra. See how far he gets out there. Ow, that just, he's got to be limber to do that. It's so hard to see from that angle. Because his foot is blocked by Parra's foot. They have rendered a decision in New York, and Pence will have an infield hit, despite that tremendous play by Arenado and a great stretch by Parra. Keep an eye on this for Gerardo in the rest of the game because of how far he had to reach out there. And for, for Nolan, you can't ask any more than what Parra tried to do to help you. So two outs and Gorky's Hernandez, who's celebrating his 29th birthday today, takes ball one. He played a really good center field last night. Tracked down a couple of uh, balls off the bat he thought may drop. Well, he came up when Gregor Blanco was hurt. Pence takes off. Murphy makes a good throw. Pence trying to get back, and this time he is out. And there will not be a review. That was weird. He took off, and he's like, I don't like the, I don't like the looks of this. <laughs> so he stopped. Whoopsie Daisy, I'll go the other way. Now you're out, Hunter. One nothing, Giants.
Rymel Toppy has been outstanding so far, getting another start in center field as Charlie Blackman has that back on the mend. And here's the rest of the Southwest batting order tonight for Walt Weiss. DJ LeMayhu, who will begin the evening at 343. He and Daniel Murphy neck and neck for the top spot in hitting in the National League. Cargo next, and uh, Nolan Arenado. David Dahl. Tom Murphy will bat sixth. He has swung it very well. Eduardo Parra has come on. Daniel Descalso will bat eighth in front of De La Rosa. And ready to go, Albert Suarez, who's pitched a couple times this year against the Rockies out of the bullpen in a long haul capacity. He's getting his ninth start. Well, he made his major league debut against the Rockies back on May 8th, and that was out of the bullpen coming in for Matt Kane. Not going to overpower you. No, fastball is 92 miles an hour. Guys are hit 261 against that slider, curveball, and changeup. And talking to Blake Doyle today around the batting cage, they were really going to focus on the changeup tonight. That was going to be that secondary pitch that they looked for. Yeah, he comes in with movement, and Tapia fouls it off the lower leg. He will sink the fastball and also cut the fastball. 26 year old Suarez from Venezuela. So, Rymel being very bright, he's now going to move the padding to where he just got hit. <laughs> I'll move it up. But I, I think you would have needed a catcher shin guard to, to cover all the area that he needed it to be in. About 90% of the time, you know the next pitch is coming down in that same location. And usually a cutter or a slider in. Toppy behind 0 and 2. He's seen several two strike hits already from Rymel. Boy, that was too good a pitch by Suarez. He got away with that. And Buster Posey was asking for the fastball up and away. Suarez shook inside, and then he comes inside in the Subaru Super Bowl in a good spot for. Top here to try to hit. Well, he didn't bite on that slider. He's down it in, so it's one and two on Rymel. Suarez lost against the Cubs in his last outing, but he gave up just two runs in five innings, only three hits. Hasn't given up more than three runs in any outing. 10 years in the minor leagues for Albert Suarez. This is his third organization. You know, it's strange. Last year, Huey, he was a Texas League earned run average leader at the end of the season. He won a, an ERA title in the Texas League in the Angels organization at 298, and then he was a minor league free agent. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. They didn't keep him around. Now, well, Suarez, still then admirably for Matt Kane this year. A little surprised because the Angels farm system is not very deep Pretty right bear. now. Pretty bare. Pretty bare. Three of the seven hits for Tapia are with two strikes. Two and two count. Called strike three on the inside corner, evidently. And, and up, he thought it was a little too tall. <laughs> A hip side fastball on the Subaru Super Bowl. Boy, Buster had to reach up. That, that was supposed to be a way. Reached all the way across and held it. Toppy is not happy with that call from Chris Caccioni. Yeah, looked up. So LeMayhew will step up. DJ one for four, an RBI single last night. He's reached 23 consecutive games, a career best, 415 batting average during that time frame. <laughs> also three home runs and 16 ribbies. And an on-base percentage is right around 490. <laughs> DJ hit 301 last year as he takes a strike. On June the 6th, he was at 299. So over his last 75 games, folks, get this. He's hit 371. That's half a season, basically. I was joking with Trevor Story a couple days ago because he was standing behind the cage watching DJ take batting practice. And I just said to Trevor, how, how nice must it be for DJ knowing that every night he's going to have two or three hits? He goes, I know. He goes, I'm trying to just get one. 
Crawford throws at LeMayhew. There's Trevor. He's progressing nicely with that thumb. Some baseball activities, but still not, not going to be able to make it back this year. Here's the Giants defensively. Brandon Belt's back in there at first base. He was there late in the game yesterday. Pagan, Gorkis, Hernandez, and Pence in the outfield. Nunez, Crawford left side, Kelby Tomlinson at second, and Posey is behind the plate. The Giants have made only one error, one error in their last 21 games. Yeah, 187, now 188 innings after the first two outs. This in. Cargo's going to end up with a hit on this. They didn't have the full shift on. They had a, they had what's known as a strong pull alignment. So the shortstop was not on the right side, but was basically up the middle. And for that reason, there was nobody. So we, there's Crawford. Yes, yeah, so we know that somebody has to be right there for it to be considered a full shift where three guys are on one side of the bag. But because of this, Tomlinson goes all the way out here. But he should have realized when he had to travel that far that he's not going to get the left-handed hitter as he's coming down the line. Two outs, and here's Arenado. Nolan one for two against Suarez. Way outside. So we've talked a lot about Cargo and how many balls he's crushed right at somebody on this homestand in particular. Well, maybe the baseball gods take care of it because the, <laughs> the exit velocity know. on that on that swing uh -huh. was 81 miles an hour. <laughs> It never evens out. I feel like, oh, don't worry, that evens out. No one doesn't. Average is 90 miles an hour. And cargo of an average <laughs> about the balls he hits typically. <laughs> 2 0 count for Nolan. Get the fastball he was sitting on. It's two and one. That's what you're going to look for tonight from Suarez. That he will pitch backwards. He has a feel for pitching. He don't do what he did in Double A last year for no reason. Goes the slider on the Subaru Supermo. Might even be more of a slurvy type pitch. Outfield straight up deep for Arenado. This ball down the line, fair ball. Cargo to third, pick it up Stu Cole, who's going to hold him at third on the double by Nolan. Ooh, that was close at third. Quick snap throw to Nunez. This ball might have caught some chalk or paint here in Coors Field, right down the line. Some part David Rackley right on it. Let's take a peek here. Yeah, it did catch the paint on the Subaru Super Bowl. Well, I've been impressed with uh, David. David and yes. Rackley is not fire. I have too. Last night his strike zone was spot on all night long. That's not an easy call right there. No, because he's trying to jump out of the way because the ball's hooking on him, so he can't go out into foul territory. Where do you go and still make the call? So a chance for a little two out magic for the Rockies here in the first David Dahl at the plate. He's got consecutive games without a hit for the first time in his young career. Stop the presses. Yeah. Oh for three and a walk last night. And get down. Not anymore. There's one. Arenado coming home. And he'll hold up on the throw by Pence. And Dahl saw the ball over Belt's head. Never broke stride. He goes to second. David Dahl has tied it up. It wouldn't last long before he got another hit. 19th so RBI for Dahl. He's too good of a hitter. You mentioned the changeup at the top of this broadcast. David Dahl goes down. And gets it, and then Pitts just airmails this throw. 
is a base runner, that's easy, because you see it out of the hand immediately. You see it up in the air, you almost that parachute throw. You just trot down to second. Thank you very much. This ball pulled to the corner. If it's fair, it's extra bases. Foul by a couple of feet. Murphy's kind of picked up where he left off in Albuquerque. 327 there. Extraordinary second half. So far in the big leagues, 571, a home run, two RBIs. Played 11 games last year for the Rockies. Hit three home runs late last season. I remember last year, that was that emergency. He wasn't planning on being up here. He was on his, I don't want to say on his couch, but he was back home, and then Nick got hurt. Hey, can you make it to the big league? Sure. Hard ground ball to second. That'll end the inning, but the Rockies with two outs rally for a run. Cargo, Arenado and Dahl, three straight hits. Zanas, a hit in his first at bat, and he's enjoying today, which is the 15th annual Roberto Clemente Day around baseball. And earlier before the game, Cargo is the Rockies nominee for the Roberto Clemente, as you saw, humanitarian award. Each team has an honoree. You can vote for Carlos Gonzalez online. Just use the hashtag VoteCargo. The award is given each year, as you see, to the player that best represents the game on and off the field, like the great Roberto Clemente. So voting begins today. Hashtag VoteCargo on Twitter and Facebook. He is a deserving guy, and we all know it. Cargo does so much. He's just, we've said it many times, he's a great people person. This is slowly hit up the middle. This is a tough chance. No chance for this Calso. And now trying to stretch it is Hernandez, and he will. That's that's a roller up the middle that turns into a double. Kind of weird because Daniel thinking, went after the ball, and then it, it almost looked like he, he veered off. Well, see how far over he is in the hole. I thought for a moment that Jorge was going to be able to get that, and he looked like he pulled his club back, thinking that Daniel was going to be there. And then he gets the leadoff double. Yeah, that's that's not good. No, not not from that ball and how softly it was hit. It's like a birthday present for Hernandez, huh? Well, Rockies have made a change defensively. I don't know if Para got hurt on the stretch. I think he Huey. did. What? The Arenado throw where he, he literally did a split because he's out of the game and Steven Cardulo's in. Remember when he was running back on the field? He felt it looked like he was trying to stretch it then. That's hard enough at first base when you're an everyday first baseman and you're used to stretching like that. This ball's well hit by Bell. Tapia going back and he's going to run out of room. 
Home run by Brandon Belt, and now it is three to one San Francisco. 15th home run for the former Texas Longhorn, and it snaps at 0 for 18. Split finger that didn't bite down like Jorge wanted to. The Giants had come in after the All Star break and they'd only hit 37 home runs. This one goes 457 feet. So those 37 home runs now make it 38. That's second fewest in the major leagues. And Brandon Crawford pulls this into the right field corner. Cargo's got a long run, and Crawford is going to stop at second out of respect for Cargo's great arm. Double, two run home run, double. Nobody out in the second. And the Giants' bats have awoken. They have five hits. They went five straight games producing 16 hits until last night when they had a whopping eight. But that must have felt like, you know, a, the dam it a, opened a, up. A, yeah, exactly. A laugher for them. But they have five hits here early against De La Rosa. Kelby Tomlinson's at the plate. Kelby, the hero of last night's game. You know, I erroneously said yesterday that he overlapped with Chad Bettis at Texas Tech. Actually, when he came in, he knows Chad, but Chad was was drafted his junior year and departed. So he didn't get to play with Chad or A.J. Ramos. And Tomlinson does his job. Moves the runner over, though it's the pitcher coming up, Suarez. I'd play the infield in too with the pitcher. Yeah, I think you have to here. Yeah, you can't give up another soft run. Albert Suarez at the plate. Three for 15 on the season. Let's have a couple of RBIs. Came up initially with the Rays. It's a strike, one and one. Twenty-six year old's been patient. Two. De La Rosa, you got to get a strike out. You here. have to. Yep, decent speed at, at third base with Crawford. There's the strikeout. Two outs. Infield could drop back, and Eduardo Nunez will come up. First strikeout of the evening for De La Rosa. Folks, join in on the conversation. If you have questions or any other kind of thoughts you want to share with us on Twitter or Instagram, please use the hashtag Toyota Talk. We'll get to as many as we can throughout the evening. And a big thank you again to Zach Wilson for joining us yesterday, the Rockies farm director. Nunez singled. In the five and a half hole leading off the game, immediately stole second, went to third on a fly ball by Pagan, and scored on a fly ball to center by Buster Posey. Ball cuts inside at 91, one ball, one strike. I think that's. Another key tonight for Jorge is that cut fastball to these right handers so they don't sit on the split finger. In 
the air deep right center field playable out there for Carlos Gonzalez. He's got it in the inning. A double and then a two run home run for Brandon Bell and the Giants back in front three to one. Out of the second inning, folks, the Rockies, when they score seven or more runs, here's what you have to do. You go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the following day, and if you do it between four and six, you will receive a Rockies taco special with Moss at Taco Bell. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Mark Stout, Suarez to Steven Cardulo, who just stepped into the ball game at first base for Gerardo Parra, who injured himself in that first inning, awaiting word as to exactly what the injury is from the Rockies clubhouse. Well, it could be either a hamstring strain or a groin. A lot of different things when you have to stretch as far as he had to on this play from Nolan. It could either be the left groin or the right hamstring. Two O's in there two and one on Cardulo. One for four in the series for Steven. And that's inside three and one. One thing for Steven too, he's got a well-defined strike zone. He's Under, good at bat. Yeah, he understands what his strength is, what, what his weakness is in relation to the pitcher and what he throws. Here's the payoff pitch, and that's lined to left by Cardulo. Cut off by Pagan. Cardulo, a hard turn, will shut it down. It was bobbled out left field by Pagan. Cardulo, he waits back on the slider that just spins up there on the Subaru Supermo. Gets the foot down, planted quickly, and then the bobble off the glove of Bagan. Like you're taught, he picked it up with the bare hand, didn't reach for it with his glove, got it back in. Here's Descalso hitting eighth in the lineup tonight. And that's right back to Suarez. One, six, three, double play. Pitcher. Number 29, Jorge Pelarosa, 
De La Rosa will come up. Jorge did not have a hit in his last ball game, which snapped a four-game hitting streak. So I'm so sure he was pretty proud a, yeah, of. Yeah, he probably took extra batting practice because of it. That's what you're supposed to do, right? One ball, one strike. Rockies are 36 and 35 at home. Last night was their 69th quality start. Tyler Anderson with a great performance. Turns into an easy inning after the base hit by Cardulo. Double play helped that, obviously. Three to one Giants as we go to the third. One of the most important ball players in the history of the game because of not only what he did on the field, and he was a Hall of Famer with 3,000 hits, what he did off the field. Passed away New Year's Eve 1972 when he was traveling to Nicaragua to help earthquake victims. And Carlos Gonzalez is the Rockies nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award. He knows about number 21. And when you first start playing baseball, uh, you know, you want to, and you fall in love with the game. You study the game. You want to know about the great players, and uh, you know Roberto Clemente. Obviously, is gonna is gonna be there. And uh, you know, I read his story when I was in the minor leagues. Uh, someone, I had the opportunity to someone giving his book, and and uh, last year I went to his museum. So I, I still I'm still learning from all the the great things that he did on on and off the field. So uh, you know, just be be have my name involved and, 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 and with his name, it's always special because he was special on, on the field and, and all the great things he did off the field too. Carlos has done so much for his home country of Venezuela where there's hard times. Hashtag vote cargo to get him to be the Roberto Clemente Award winner this year. Another thing that baseball is doing different this year is a seat 31 nominee from every seat 21, my fault, from around baseball. And the Rockies nominee is that man, Brad Miley the executive director of the Denver Rescue Mission. He left a banking career 17 years ago. As this is a comeback to De La Rosa. And he joined the Denver Rescue Mission. And he's the executive director. He does a lot in conjunction with the Rockies and of course with Denver and Colorado to raise food and help people throughout this community. He is the C21 honoree for the Rockies. And guys, I was talking to Brad before the game, went to Cheyenne Mountain, all state tailback there, all conference center fielder, and played a year at Northern Arizona in the Big Sky Conference. Said he was too small and too slow, so that's all he lasted. But great athlete and a great man being honored along with Carlos Gonzalez here on Roberto Clemente Day. Yeah, that's wonderful. It's uh, one of the most prestigious awards given out. Very important award, very important day in baseball. Honor the late great Roberto Clemente. 
finished his career with 3,000 hits. Just his legacy, both on and just as importantly off the field for Roberto. And we talk about the overt racism that Jackie Robinson had to endure. Well, for players from Latin America, especially early on, not altogether different. That's why I mean, there's been a push and some movement to have the number 21 retired. Line shot right at Nolan. Two outs as Buster Posey's retired. That'll bring up Hunter Pence. From Robert, you give so much back in the heart of the Rockies. Thank you for being a part of our team. He's become a big part of this community. He loves Denver. We've watched Cargo grow up, as you do with all your you know, favorite athletes that are fortunate enough to stick around a long time. And Cargo's been here now the better part of a decade. And he's got his little boy, and he's got <laughs> uh, his twin girls. And I saw a shot of them and his wife the thing I, the ball game. I appreciate the most about cargo you talk about growing up here and really becoming a Rocky it's to us and to me he hasn't changed from his rookie year to how he is now from this guy that had a, a boatload of talent to a guy that is a superstar but he acts the same way today as he did back then yeah and, and you see transitions in sports all the time this is on the ground in Nolan you know, this is, you say, who's the face of the Rockies? Nice pickup by Cardulo. You know, naturally, for years, it was, it was Todd Helton, and now it's that mantle. People want to place it naturally on the back of Nolan Arenado. But it, for me, it's two guys. It's Nolan and it's that guy, Carlos Gonzalez. Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Bank of the West for a personal approach to banking. Go West, Bank of the West. Stepping in for the Rockies in the third is Rymel Tapia. The Giants ahead 3-1 to one on a very pretty Wednesday night here in Lodo. Tapia lays down a bunt. Posey to first with a strong throw. He gets Tapia. It had to be a strong throw. Buster jumped on this baseball on this bunt, immediately Seven called off Suarez, says, I've got this. And then he had to make the spin. See how he's already leaning forward out to the balls of his feet? But watch the spin now. He bare hands it, spins, and throws in one motion. By a half stride, does he get Toppy on the Subaru Super Bowl? I like the technique.
LeMahieu with one out. We did get word as to why Parra had to leave the ball game, and Huey, you were all over it. Right hamstring. Yeah, you could just tell how far he had to, to stretch to go out and get it. I want to go back to this bunt for a moment. And what I was talking about, watch him take his foot right here towards the plate. That's exactly what you want to do. Now, the angle might not have been as clean towards the line as you wanted to, but the technique initially was spot on. Without a strike on you, you like that. A fair foul. Yeah, you want it to be really fine. Right. And more on that right on the edge of the grass dirt area. But his technique, as far as I, I like as a left handed hitter, you take your foot towards the to the plate so you create a better angle for yourself. Toward that, that, back, that corner. back corner. And that's exactly what he did. DJ with a 3 1 count. He had a chopper to short his first time. Another chopper to short. Murphy tonight is one for two. He's hitting 343 as the Nationals host the Braves. They're 1 1 in the fourth. Cargo coming up with nobody on and two outs. He had a soft single to the right of second base and now Crawford is going to shift completely to the spot where cargo singled <laughs> interestingly that started a two out rally as Nolan followed with a double and then David Dahl had a base hit to drive in the Rockies lone run when the Giants play it more traditional with that I say more traditional in my mind with the shift where they'll move the shortstop over but we've seen some clubs they'll move this the third baseman to that area leave the shortstop at his normal position. No swing one and one. Cargo at 25 home runs. 10 against lefties this year. 15 against righties. Up and in. Way up and in on the Subaru strike zone. A gorgeous sky tonight. Cargo. That's a great play by Crawford. Man. Crawford takes a base hit from Cargo. One, two, three inning for Suarez. Giants. Have some good defenders, none better than their shortstop Brandon Crawford. Three to one Giants. Ball brought to you by T-Mobile. Career run support at home. De La Rosa has got nearly seven runs a game. That coupled with outstanding starts for 
of Jorge at Coors Field is the reason that he is the winningest pitcher ever at 20th and Blake. It's a strike, Jorge. 62 and 28 with a 457. That, that's at home at all the time. That's, yeah, he's 53 and 19, 19 at Coors Field. Yeah. 34 games above 500. Pretty picture. 0 and 2 on Hernandez. De La Rosa, 101 career victories now. Tonight is 99th career start at Coors Field. That's why you can rack up some wins against an opponent. 8-1 against San Francisco. Fourth highest win percentage against any opponent at a current home ballpark. Leaned on to right center field by Hernandez, and he has a birthday home run. It is a birthday double and a birthday home run now. Four to one Giants. First, First home run. run of the year. Yeah. Nice time for it. Get yourself a present. Just a two seam fastball that Hernandez leans on and takes it out the opposite way over the big. Fence in right center field. Down in the minor leagues, he had eight home runs at Triple A, Sacramento, in 116 games. On the ground to short, Descalso punches the glove once with the baseball, throws out Belt, who homered to center field his first at bat. One out, the run in. Brandon Crawford, who doubled, comes up. Years ago, hit 320 against lefties. Last year, 259. He's above 270 this year. Early in his career, really Remember, struggled. He was down in the 150s. In his first year, 2011, it was it was even worse than that. It was 133. And I was just giving him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, trying to help him out. I talked to him about how he's evolved as a hitter. He got to the big leagues very quickly because of his reputation with the glove. He had that reputation when he left Pleasanton, California, in Northern California, and went down to Westwood and played at UCLA. He started every game from Jump Street at shortstop as a freshman at UCLA. And he said it was my. Uh, he said I always felt like I could hit. He said, but it was it was my glove that got me in the lineup early and it's got hard. me to the big leagues early. Well, when you're stepping into a program like UCLA as a true freshman at a premier position, shortstop. You know you have to have some unique skill set and for for Brandon it was a glove he could pick it always has always will. Guys like that they, they're just born with great hands. You know, earlier in the year he was being mentioned in the first half as an MVP candidate because the Giants had the best record in baseball and Crawford a really good two way player. De La Rosa strikes him out here. Going to enjoy a memorable dinner on the Coors Field infield at the Rockies Kindness Dinner on Wednesday, September 14. For more information, call 303 312 2337. I'll bring up Kelby Tomlinson. View from the rooftop. Man, what a beautiful night this has turned into. What a sunset. in a single. Giants with seven hits in the ball game. Number 56, if you're a first base coach, you have an important role. It's a twofold role. And you're 
time in pitchers moves to the plate dispensing advice and that sort of thing to base runners and you're also an equipment collector <laughs> that remember before the bat boys would run all the way down there and grab all this stuff sometimes if, if the inning was extended you'd see that first base coach with elbow guards on both elbows he had the shin guards had a wad full of batting gloves look like the Michelin man <laughs> right and he could auction that stuff. Yeah, I got a pair of batting gloves. Batting gloves. Here you go. Here you go. Right. <laughs> Make a few bucks on the way back That's to your right. dugout. Billy Hayes. Two strikes on Albert Suarez. And a strikeout third for De La Rosa. Home run by Gorky Fernandez. Four to one Giants. Trail as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. UC Health is tracking the number of walks in the distance the Rockies are in throughout the season. Start tracking your own steps today to get fit. So far this season, the Rockies have walked 444 times, just shy by 40 feet of 40,000. I like that view. That's a shot we haven't showed too frequently. That's a lot of fun up there at the rooftop. Not that we would know, but it just looks like a lot you of fun. You know what? I went up there one time. I think it was last year. We had an off day. Came down. We weren't televising, I should say. Went up to the rooftop just to see what it was like. Beautiful view. Always hopping as Nolan oh. takes a strike. I'm wondering, has Stout, who's such a... You know, he'll go to the end of the earth to, to get a story, but it seems like we haven't seen Mark up there at no. the rooftop. Is he getting, like, lazy? He doesn't want to I'm here. go all the way up there. Are you, are you on the rooftop? Yeah. No. Come on. I'm up here with, the, with all the fans, right? See? You are. Yeah. When Came was up the early last to time? see the sunset. When were, <laughs> it's pretty, isn't it? When was the yeah. last time you were up there, Mark? Not a lot this year. You know, I, would, I was the mayor, and I don't think I have that title anymore since George left. He, he gave me that title. So. The mayor of the rooftop. <laughs> yeah. I know, because I don't remember seeing you up there. But that's a, it's a blast. We have to live vicariously through you because we don't get up there. Yeah. It's a, it's a perfect place to watch a game. Perfect place to watch a game? Right? Yeah. See. Do you want, Mark, do you know what you Fauci look like? What? You look like the fifth guy in Impractical <laughs> Jokers. I, I know. <laughs> right. How out of place am I with this look? <laughs> that guy blew you off. He wanted no part of yeah. you. <laughs> All right, Mark, right? Uh, okay, we're going to whisper in your ear because nobody knows you're on television right now. Mark, I want you to say to this next guy that goes, by, will you dance with me? The next guy that I yes. see? You see, if, see if he'll dance with you. Okay. David Dawood. We Come do a little on. dance with me, just a little. Yeah, 
see? Let's go Rockies. Go Rockies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. There the high hey, you get you get a you get a thumb up, Mark. You get nice job, right. Mark. That's outstanding. Faster. Faster. All right. It's a party up here. See, that, everybody's going to dance. We bring the party, Huey. right? Yeah. One strike on David Dahl. I can see why Mark went up there for the sunset. A couple shots a moment ago. Up here, Ringo. That's why we live in this beautiful state. Yeah, tonight's sunset was spectacular. Lewis ball hammered. Mark, put out your hands. You may catch this one. Second deck bomb, David Dahl. Making an even 20 RBI now for David. He said when he first came up tonight, he was hitless in his last two games. Well, changed tonight. Now he's two for two. Everybody take a look at that baseball. Make sure it's not dented on one side because he hit it so square. Souvenir. Yeah, he, you could go in the early home run trot on that one. Oh, yeah. And you don't get two steps out of the box and you can go into your trot. There's a strike on the outer edge on Tommy Murphy. Both runs driven in tonight, courtesy of David Dahl. Freeze this on contact because you remember where David had to go and get the change up before this time more it's right there mid thigh drops the barrel drops that back shoulder to, to create the lift. And then the majestic moon shot. Long way out in right center field to go to the second deck. One and two on Murphy. This ball hit deep to left. This ball's gone. And the Rockies are within a run. When Murphy hits them, they stay hit. No, they say out loud, too. Second one this season, third RBI. Get Dave Rigetti out to chat with this pitcher score as boy Tommy Murphy, David Dahl going back to back. Tried to run a fastball in, and it was in in his wheelhouse. As our good friend Dwayne Kuyper would say, that is out of here. <laughs> yes, it was. Two no doubters right there. First David and then Tommy. That'll bring up Steven Cardula. He hit his big boy pants on there. You're right. The kids living large. in the same location on the Subaru strike zone. They just try a third time to go out there again. Posey off the plate and I'll tell you what Suarez was fortunate. That thing was a center cut slider that kind of hung up a little bit. Pence makes the catch second out of the inning and that'll bring up Descalso. 
12th time this year that the Rockies have gone back to back. For Baroque chime in and Tom Murphy is having an yeah. unbelievable summer. First half so so offensively second half you can't get him out. He had well, that the first period. half Remember, was still spring. He had and I've never seen this. Certainly at any professional level and I don't know outside of t-ball if I've heard of this kind of line at one point this summer folks in Albuquerque Tom Murphy was 21 for 27 at the plate with a lot of home runs I mean it was just every night we'd look four hits three hits he turned it around in a big way One and two on Descalso. Five home runs now for Murphy and 44 big league at bats. One run every eight and a half at bats. Do that for your career, and you know who you are? You're Barry, Barry Bonds. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. That's right. The Rockies' future showcases a full stage. These guys are showing it tonight. And the slider on the outside corner strikes at this castle, but the Rockies back within a run. Back to back home runs, David Dahl and Tommy Murphy. 4 3 as we head to the fifth at Coors Field. by one as we go to the top of the fifth inning top of the order for the Giants Eduardo Nunez lead off we are showing Ramon Marquez the reason why is he was named the Eastern League pitcher of the year earlier today congratulations to Ramon who graduated from Hartford late in the season moved on to Albuquerque where he continued to pitch well and now he's a big leaguer awaiting his first opportunity to pitch at this level he is a young man that has a really high ceiling. He came in the trade for Corey Dickerson last offseason. 126 strikeouts and 21 starts for double A. I mean, just to be able to do that and then go to triple A and continue, it just shows you what what hard work will do, but also you put up numbers, you're gonna get you're gonna get to the next level, and then you get to the big level. You know, initially he's gonna uh, work as a reliever here late this season. But he is a starting pitcher and he is another one of those guys we've been referencing it all year all these young guys that the Rockies have you know, built up through their system or acquired in the case of Marquez in the case of Jeff Hoffman guys with power arms and, and the Rockies have never had this number of high quality guys and, and that's what's fun when you go to spring training or, or you see some of these numbers and then the guys come up and you can see you can put your eyes on them and see and look at them and then when they go out there and pitch. They show you that electricity. Tough hop, not for Nolan. He throws out Nunez. That's a gorgeous play, folks. Top spin hop, and 
Nolan, as he so frequently does, makes it look easy. Your natural instinct is to charge this, but Nolan drop steps because he knows that's the only angle he's going to be able to get to this ball. But watch his right foot. Watch, just, just eye, eye that, okay? Right foot, drop step, open up. And then the second thing that he did, too, is he had his glove in front of his eyes. Too many times as a third baseman, when we drop step, we, we start to lose our glove back with our body, and then the, the glove gets behind the eyes, and you don't see the ball. So first of all, you get the drop step, but then the glove, watch the eyes transition down into the glove. And it's hit that hard, you can just gather your, your feet and make the throw to first. Switch hitting Angel Pagan takes outside. It's 2 0 in a 4 3 ball game. Seven hits for the Giants, six hits for the Rockies. Both teams clean defensively. When you played third, and you were primarily a shortstop, did you go to a longer glove or were you no. still 11 and a half? Still and 11, short and, a, 11 and, and a half. Because I, I knew exactly where my hand was in that glove. And, but for Nolan, he does use a little bit longer glove because that's the only position he plays. But I asked Daniel Descalso about this too. Does he switch when he's at short or maybe move over to second or, or, or to third base? Does he change gloves? And he said he doesn't either. So Danny just uses the same glove because he just feels natural in his hand. Christian Adamas, 11 and a half, 11, 11 and three, three quarters, quarters 12. 12. And some guys like that. They, 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 can, they can move from one size, go up, as you move more to the left side of the diamond and then you go back over to second base you get the smaller one for the quick turns at second on the double plays. This ball is slapped to right cargo will come on and make the catch and Pagan is retired. Not so often said after a team especially when they're behind puts a couple markers up on the board. Paramount for a pitcher to go out and have a quick inning and Get the offense right back to the bat rack. And two thirds of the way there is Jorge De La Rosa, but now he's got to deal with Buster Posey. Sack fly to center and a line shot at Arenado. Curveball misses ball one. Posey, a career 389 hitter at Coors Field. The only guy who's hit higher at Coors Field with a Great number of at bats is Adrian Beltre, who is ageless, <laughs> evidently. But another terrific year down in Arlington. Buster just two for 20 this month. It's three and out. Posey closing in on 150 at bats without a home run. Pretty good group there on that list. Swinging 3 0 and a base hit. Such a nice feeling, Huey, when you get a hit on 3 0, and it's a sick feeling when you swing 3 0 and you don't get a hit. <laughs> For Buster, he said, What do I have to lose? I got nothing. I got 3 0. This might be the only fastball I get, so he hit it in the hole for the base hit. The fans, the first 10,000 through the gates for the Rockies Cardinals game on September 20th. We'll receive a coupon for a Hebrew National Dollar Hot Dog. One strike on Pence. Cut fastballs to start this at bat for Hunter. 187, the last one 89 miles an hour. Here's the 0 2 on Pence, and that skips past 
Murphy and now Posey at second base with two gone a wild pitch. He's tried to throw this splitter as hard as he could. Oh, excuse me that was a, a slider. He's looking at the rotation. Normally when he buries it it's that split finger that comes out of his hand and, and just tumbles too fast. Steps off. It's a splitter count. Very infrequently is it not a splitter count for De La Rosa. It's De La's six wild pitch this year. You know, with Posey at second, who's a catcher, and obviously he's been around a long time. Kind of like that move. Call Murphy out, who's never caught De La Rosa, and tell him exactly what pitch you're going to throw here. So you remove Make sure, yeah. any opportunity for Posey maybe to steal a sign. Slider again. It looked like two and two. Well, just to make sure that that Jorge knows what he wants to throw. There's no guessing. There's not a, a lot of no. I don't want that one and have to go through three or four signs. Went from O2 to three two in a hurry. Murphy feels like it's March 12th and he's in blocking drills down in Scottsdale with Latch. On a backfield. There's Latch. Still, every day they take those catches out in the bullpen. They're working on blocking all sorts of drills. Well, he's especially grouchy right now. Not just normal grouchy for uh, for Latch, <laughs> because uh, SC still got absolutely hammered by Alabama. It's three or four days later. Doesn't matter. This ball in the air left center field a deep long run out there for Dahl can't get there. Posey cruises in on the Pence double. A little two out rally now for the Giants in the fifth and they get a run back it's five to three. Seventeenth double of the year four hundred. Oh, you can sit on a pitch, it makes it easier for a hitter. The 90 mile an hour fastball on the Subaru Supermo. Hunter Pence with the kind of the unorthodox quick leg kick and hits it in the gap. But the inability to get to finish him off when he had him 0 2, you know, buried those pitches, buried it again, and it came in with the fastball. Hernandez on his 29th birthday a double and his first home run of the year. That's a strike one and one. And the Giants have had a miserable second half record wise and offensively. To turn it around every Giant fan knows that it's going to have to fall on the shoulders of your best players. That means Posey and Pence. And they've clicked here in the fifth to produce a run. Well, and Brandon Belt, too, who had a home run earlier, who's on deck right now. Fair point. That's why you're paying these guys the big bucks. And that De La Rosa laboring here, three and one. I think it was just motoring right along for a war A. Got two quick outs that fell behind to Posey. Brandon Belt. Three and two. Can't leave him up in that Subaru strike zone. You got to start working more at the knees. Swung on and miss, so that'll get De La Rosa and the Rockies off the field. But with two outs, Posey singled, was wild pitch to second, and scored on the Pence double. 5 3, Giants leading, middle of five.
CenturyLink High Speed Challenge poll question. We want to know who scored the first run in Coors Field history. Your three choices, Larry Walker, Walt Weiss, or Eric Young Sr. What's the deal? He was, he was a potential answer to every question <laughs> lately. That's, that's what you do. When in doubt, you just vote for EY. Yeah. One of the all-time Rockies. Go to AdRootSports underscore RM to vote. That's how I passed a couple tests in college. Just write EY's just, name uh, down? Yeah, I wrote EY's name down. And what were those tests on? There's Usually a strike. statistics. And there's a strike on De La Rosa, one and one. The letter C, uh -huh. when in doubt. When in doubt. Color in C. Toppy on deck. Rockies trailing by two. They've been out hit nine to six. Rubber game of this three game set. Rockies with a win. Even up the season series at 8 8. Taylor running hard the whole way. He's out one unassisted as Suarez just took it all the way to the bag. Well, yesterday we were breaking down all of the. Uh, minor league affiliates of the Rockies. We began the DSL Dominican Summer League and by the time the ball game ended we still had a couple of to go in the Eastern League the Rockies double A affiliate the Hartford Yard Goats and they played 144 road wow. games this year folks they their, their home was never fully completed. Followed that story this year. Shane Broyles wanted to point out uh, he and Matt Pierpoint had uh, nice years there but Antonio Sensatella another name to remember for the future now he made only seven starts this year four and one with a 182 one of the top pitchers in the Cal League last year he had a shoulder issue and the Rockies just out of precaution shut him down for the whole season but Sensatella is going to make a full recovery and he is a guy that can get to the big leagues very quickly a name to remember Rosel Herrera Herrera is a guy that was really well thought of when he was signed as a 16 year old. And I remember when we first met him, he was a puppy, he came over here with Rolando Fernandez, and he had some good years in the minor leagues. Last year, he really struggled, but congrats to him. He bounced back this year, 292 average. He drove in 66, he stole 36 bags, put his name back. Uh, on the marquee, perhaps. Omar Carazella started the year in Modesto, got 21 ball games in at double A. And Ryan McMahon didn't hit for the kind of average we've seen in the past. The home runs were down. Uh, but this is a tremendous still, prospect as well as a corner infielder. He's getting time at first base. Yeah, over 70 games this year. And there are 66 games, 70 games at first base with Nolan at third. They increase his value. Yeah, then Ryan will be going to the There's, AFL, yeah. the Arizona Fall League. One and two on top here against Suarez. Tapia last night a walk and a sack fly. He had an absolute miss oh. up right at Buster Posey his first time up last night. This wasn't a, a, a missile off of Buster Posey or at Buster. This was just a foul tip. Right off. The elbow. Foul tip on the Subaru Super Bowl. Ow. Nothing you can do as a catcher. You just wear it, walk back, put the mask on. So I'm good. Let's go. Suarez ahead, one and two. Go upstairs with the fastball. It's similar to the same pitch they struck him out in the first inning where they, they tried to stand him up. That one was higher than the first when he was called out. He stays off that pitch. You see some of the discipline and it's hard. For the young hitter. It's a hard pitch to stay off of when you're crouched down. Because where's that ball coming? It's right coming at your eye level. So you think your, your your brain tells you you can hit it, but it just takes some some discipline to lay off it. Three two. 
There he goes again after that foul tip for Toppy. He smells the bat. Ron Bell is just 22, and, and he looks 22. Playing at about 165 pounds, six foot two. I love the energy he brings every day. He's had a big impact already. He's not afraid to control the, the tempo, the pace of this game. He didn't like what Suarez was doing, how long he was taking. A lot of rookies would say, oh, I'm not going to call timeout. I can't. I'm a rookie. He didn't. Timeout. That's a yanked foul. Tapia came into this season with a career minor league average of 314. Never hit below 300 at any professional stop. And he earns a walk. That's a terrific at bat. So with one out, Tapia to first, and that'll bring up LeBay here. Walk allowed by Suarez. Here's the uh, race for a batting title. DJ at 341. And by a point, David Murphy, who's had a good night, is ahead of him right now. Park against Atlanta, sixth inning, Atlanta leading two to one, and all of a sudden it made it bad. Here comes Rags, Dave Rigetti to talk to Suarez. Stephen Okert, the left-hander up for the Giants. Just looking to see who is pitching for Atlanta in that game against Washington. It's Fulton Evich. Fulton Evich got good stuff. He has 84 pitches though in the fifth inning. Did you see Strasburg left that game after two and a third? I did. That has to be a big red flag for Washington. Here to compete in that postseason, they need Steven Strasburg to state the obvious. 1 0 on LeMahieu. Twice he's hit ground balls to short. It's time for a patented base hit to right then. So Suarez touches the zone there. One ball, one strike. Cargo patiently waiting his turn. 5 3 Giants in the fifth. A slider. Tapia with a couple steals. In a short, brief major league career. Had one last night. It was the third inning when he came around to score on a base hit by DJ that didn't leave the infield. Hustling all the way around. Tapia leaning a little bit out at first base. Paul Emmel says Belt got the tag down, and Toppy saying, I'm not leaving. I think I got my hand in. I'm not going anywhere. So now Walt will wait to hear from Brian Jones. You know the drill. Looks like Belt tagged him on the elbow. I think he's out. I think he's out, too. Maybe he just doesn't want to go back to the dugout yet. They're not even going to. Asked for this to be reviewed. So Tapia picked off. Two outs.
two and one on LeMayhew. Careful, DJ, backup slider. That is not going to be playable for Belt. It's a good thing that Stout was up on the rooftop because that's his normal area. I was thinking that. It probably hit the chair, yeah, didn't it? Right, it hit, hit right the, the chair head. right behind Bo. Make a play, Bo. Three and two on LeMayhew. Be a late night for the Rockies. For the Giants. Giants heading down to Phoenix Rockies to San Diego. Giants the have Gi an off day tomorrow in Arizona. Yep, Giants do have an off day. Rockies have to tee it up tomorrow night against the Padres. And this is on the ground a second. Tomlinson flips over to Bell. And that's all for Colorado in the fifth inning. We move on to the sixth, five to three Giants. story earlier and I talked to Trevor today he's running every other day lifting lower body and he's excited when the team comes back from the road trip on the off day on the 15th he gets that soft cast off six weeks of the day that he had his surgery I was thinking about Trevor story and the season he had and with the Broncos starting tomorrow with Trevor Simeon at quarterback how about the top Trevor's in pro sports in Denver so I looked this up no rapids no nuggets Trevor Tierney the goalie played both for the Mammoth and the Outlaws their story and there's two Broncos Trevor Simeon and Trevor Price and there are your Trevors in Denver sports and the NHL guy for the Avalanche Trevor Johansson who in 77 was the 12th pick overall by the Leafs then he came and played for the Colorado Rockies you know who was picked after him Ron Duguay Ron Duguay, he had the hair. Uh, Bart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bart, yeah, yeah. Please, don't, please don't take this the wrong way. Yeah, what's that, Drew? You need a hobby. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is my hobby, so to speak. Uh, my job is yeah. my hobby. Trevor Johansson, well, Rockies hockey, 108 games. He's minus, right. minus 46. Oh, that's not good. Right, Jeff. Oh, that's bad. Oh, a defenseman, too. Oh, boy. You know, <laughs> actually, a little known fact about the great Dikembe Mutombo of the Nuggets. Okay. His nickname was, was Trevor. Trevor. <laughs> I that's, thought, that's a good uh, one. That, nice work, Mark. Three the finger wag. <laughs> the finger wag. Three yeah. and one on belt. That's in there. Three and two. So Bell draws a leadoff walk here in the sixth inning. First walk tonight for Jorge. And that'll bring up Brandon Crawford, a double and a strikeout. That's the 87th walk for Brandon Belt, fourth in the National League. Get a little activities. Guys getting up down in the Rockies bullpen. You know, last year, Crawford won a gold glove. He became the first Giant to win a gold glove since 2006 when Omar Vizquel won a gold glove for the Giants. Not, not, you know, they were both shortstops, obviously, but that's for any position. The Giants hadn't had. A gold glove winner in nine years. And we mentioned they've played just terrific defensive baseball well, really that, all year, but last 21 games, now 21 and a half games, they've committed only one error. And that was a drop pop up by Brandon Belt in Chicago. They have a 987 fielding percentage. That's third best in the National League, fourth best in baseball. Offered a double in the second inning, right down the right field line. That's where De La Rosa typically so good with that splitter ahead in the count and getting weak contact on the ground. A lot of double plays behind him. We'll look back one day, Huey, long after uh, Jorge has retired, is enjoying uh, the good life. Not that this is a bad life. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, <laughs> this isn't too shabby. Yeah, but uh, you know, raising his kids, and we're going to say, man, can you believe this guy was 30 some odd games above 500 at Coors Field, and many of the years, not all, of them, but many of the years that. He was winning games at Coors Field. The Rockies weren't winning many games other than when he, he started. Was, he was the one guy you could count on to, to go out there. And maybe at times, maybe even a little underappreciated for what he has done in, in his career. But at Coors Field, to be 53 and 19, 98 career starts. You could tell by his reaction a couple of weeks ago when he won his 100th game. He's a very quiet man, but it meant a lot to him. And he strikes sure. out Crawford. It ought to. That's a that's a big number. It's a bigger number now than it ever has been. Right. It used to be 300 was the magic number to get you into Cooperstown. Now that's sliding back down. You think there's very few guys above 200 wins that are active. But for Jorge, too, to, to have 100 wins as a, as a Mexican-born player, what it means and where it puts him on that list in the top five. Yeah. Kelby Tomlinson a single his last time up it was up the middle. <laughs> Kelby looks like he could correct your calculus <laughs> homework also as in addition to uh, playing the infield for you. Shortstop at Texas Tech. 
Well, at least help tutor it. And I hope never to need his assistance. No, I wasn't good at calculus. It's Slowly hit to third. Nolan, did he get the force? He did. Point this out so many times. He's got, you know, great heart, great hands. He's got the big arm. He's got the soft hands. But he also has great guts. A lot of third basemen there, so you know what? I'm going to take easy out at first and leave a runner in scoring position. And not only guts, that internal clock that some infielders have, others don't have. No one knows how much time he has and where he needs to go with the ball. So it's not hit hard. He's coming in. He's already registered right now. I'm going to second base. I got Brandon Belt running. If I make a strong throw, I know DJ's going to act like a first baseman. They're going to come off because you can't turn two and get that lead runner. Keep a guy out of scoring position. Here's Mac Williamson pinch hitting for Albert Suarez. He takes a strike. So we're talking about active pitchers with 200 plus win. There are only two of them now. CC has 222. And the Ageless Wonder Cologne, 231. Next on the list is John Lackey with 174. So the 100 wins should mean something for War A. That's a, that's a proud moment. One and one on Williamson. One and two. See where there's some teams that are trying to get Mark Burley to come out of retirement, <laughs> figuring that. he could throw in his backyard for a couple of days and be ready to get big league hitters out. Not like he has to recover his 95 mile an hour fastball. This is fisted to short. This castle will flip to second, and that will end the inning from the Giants' perspective. Middle of six, San Francisco five, Colorado three. Cargo will lead it off when we return. Cap. The Rockies trailing the Giants five to three as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Rockies hit a couple of home runs. David Dahl and Tom Murphy went back to back. Brandon Belt has a two run shot for the Giants. And Gorky Hernandez on his 29th birthday has a home run and a double. De La Rosa just got handshakes, so his evening will be done. And Suarez was just pinch hit for Stephen Oker up for the third time this year for San Francisco. It's in the ball game. Lefty's hitting just 235 against him. And right now, in that expanded bullpen, this being September, Bruce Bochy has his choice of a half dozen <laughs> lefties. That's why we might see from here on out kind of a Congo line. Just right, left, right, left. They're just marching them in, 
one after the other. Well, basically, you know this from the sixth inning forward this time of year, especially if you're facing Boach's team, they're going to match up. They're going to match up left on left. They're going to match up right on right, typically. And there's enough arms to do it. Well, they just added another arm down there in, in Jake Peavy, who just came off the DL. So. Yeah, Jake's yeah. no longer in the rotation. Yeah, so he's he's available out in the pin from the right side. Cargo fouls it off. It's always tough assignments. You haven't seen a guy. Cargo hasn't seen no Kurt. And all you can do is go by the scouting report. Say, boy, what does he have? Well, he's got a fastball, both two and four seam will cut it, and a slider. Pretty much assume many lefty coming out of the pants fastball slider guy. 100. George Contos is now up on the right side. Rockies have Jordan Lyles up. Two two on cargo. And this ball is in the air to shallow center. This one is going to be caught. Hernandez, who's been very impressive playing center field the last couple of ball games, makes a sliding catch. Well, he has a double and a home run, and then the sliding catch. There wasn't any hesitation on his part. Do I pull back and just let it drop? He looks it in on the Subaru Super Bowl. Keeps the glove above the grass. It's always key if he can as an outfielder so it doesn't pop out. So here's Arenado, Nolan, a 304 career hitter with 18 home runs against the Giants. He's driven in 58 and 65 games. Strike on Arnado. Good job last night by Tyler Anderson. I want to make sure we made mention of that again. Seven and a third. Two runs, six hits. Every time out. 16 starts. I mean, this guy is turning into something special. Unfortunately, the Rockies couldn't maintain that two to one lead when he left the ball game. One of the inherited runners scored against Jordan Lyles. And I know, you know we talked to a lot of scouts and they were they were going to be watching Tyler for the first time last night. They hadn't seen him. They'd seen the numbers and even talking to him today said man this kid can pitch. He just he has a feel for pitching. He's not a thrower. He's a pitcher. Talked to a couple scouts today who said boy we hadn't seen 94 from him before. And a couple times last night he reached back for a little something extra. He's conversing with. Jason Mott, Tony Walters is on his right. Jason Mott threw a 25 pitch in a simp game today through to hitters, live hitters. Can't send anybody out this no. time of year. There's nowhere to go play. So this, that's your only option. Do that a few more times. You don't want to just have him as much time as he missed. You don't want to just have him throw a sim game or two and then immediately put him back into a major league game. So last night the Rockies lost another one run affair. They're nine and 18 in one run games. I want to throw a couple numbers at you. We briefly showed earlier in the ball game. On this homestand the Rockies have a 249 ERA with their starting pitchers. And they have averaged 6.8 runs a game as Nolan goes down. If I told you that the Rockies starters at Coors Field had a 2.49 ERA over eight games, and it averaged almost seven runs a game. What would you think their record was in those eight games? You'd hope Hopefully at the least better. you'd hope yeah, seven six. and one, if not eight. No, right? Right. But you look at that 2.49 ERA. That's 14 earned runs in 50 and two thirds innings. Conversely, the relievers 17 earned runs, so just three more earned runs. But 21 and a third innings for the relievers. It's been tough. We, 
you can break it down more in the four wins in the seventh inning or later. In the four wins, one earned run. In the four losses, 19 earned runs. One ball, one strike on Dahl, who's hung in nicely against lefty since his call up. He hit a monstrosity of a home run his last time up. Also an RBI single in the first. David has driven it to the Rockies three tonight. I had an home run cut there, but back in the fourth inning, he connected. Just start trotting right away. For a guy that's not big, he generates a lot of power. Think about his home runs, too. It's, it's been pulled, but that was more right center. He's hit him out to center field and left center. Good job staying off that two and two. Yesterday was the 69th quality start for the Rockies. Last year they had 54. Popped up, Brandon Crawford territory. He's got it. A one, two, three, sixth inning for Oker. Five, three Giants off to the seventh. Facts are brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. Last year, the Rockies' record with their starters 41 and 62. This year, they're almost 500, and they've shaved half a run, a little more than half a run, off their ERA among their starters. One batting average dropped 21 points. The strikeouts per nine innings is up. All positives. The Rockies have to figure out that bullpen. Justin Miller's the new arm in the ball game for the Rockies. It'll be the top of the order for San Francisco. Eduardo Nunez, Angel Pagan, Buster Posey. Just came off the DL on Friday. He'd been placed there back on July 5th with the straight left oblique. Two innings pitch in the Arizona series. Gave up two hits, three strikeouts for Justin. Nunez singled, stole a base, scored in the first inning. Robbed of a hit his last time up by Arenado. You know, the Giants, despite the miserable second half, they're 26 and 23 in one run games. 49 one run games. They've played more one run affairs than any team in baseball. They're accustomed to it with all the tight, low scoring affairs at AT&T Park. Five out of the last six games, they have six out of the last eight. For San Francisco, have been one-run games. Hunter Strickland now up in the bullpen for San Francisco, the right-hander. Oh. 
one and two Giants bullpen has posted a 130 ERA over their last 13 games and they stranded 24 of 27 inherited runners. She work in the bullpen for Bruce Bochy. You better stay ready. Two and two. He'll let his starters throw well over 100 pitches. But then after that, he does, he probably matches up left, right, deep into a game. You know, in fairness, though, he's got some horses. I mean, you're not going to go out and pull the baseball from Madison Bumgarner. You're not going to pull it from recently acquired Johnny Cueto. You're not going to pull it from Jeff Samarja. Typically, well, Cueto has been lights Matt, out this year. Kane too. He was that guy also. Yeah. He was so durable for so long. The Rockies hope to get to that position. But right now, you're still dealing with talented young pitchers. Where you know throwing 110, 115, 120 pitches probably most often out of the question. You got the young guy John Gray. That's not going to be there this year. Tyler Anderson out of the, the elbow last year. Tyler Chatwood to Tommy Johns. Yeah, I mean, you just got to be smart about it. You got Hoffman, who's now in the six man rotation, who's coming off Tommy John right. surgery a couple of years ago. One oh to Pagans inside, two and oh. Well, you can't have enough. You cannot have Never. enough starting pitching. Used to be scouts would look at a guy's delivery and say, man, I think, I think the way he delivers it, he cross fires, he leads with his elbow. I mean, he's susceptible to injury. And I think more scouts now, not that they won't include that in a scouting report potentially, but more scouts now understand that. It's not when it's not, it's not if it's when we always go back to the prime example Mark Pryor remember Mark clean, clean as can be as his can delivery be, big horse right handed everything you're looking for he broke down and then never never was able to make it back three O's in there three and one. Sometimes it's just good fortune. That's right. James Shields, I know he's having a really rough year this year, but he just keeps rolling out 200 plus innings. Never gotten hurt. Pagan goes to first, the one out walk, and that'll bring up Posey. Mm -hmm. Take a behind the scenes tour of Coors Field Group and individual tickets available year round. Call 303 Rockies and get behind the scenes. Rockies have Jake McGee up now. Do you know the Giants, Huey, have not won consecutive road games since May 31st, June 1st? Well, you had eight. Wins in their last 26 out on the roads just in the last two weeks. I mean, the Giants are four and eight. The Mets are 10 and three. They picked up five and a half games in the wild card now against the Giants. The Mets are on a roll. They won again tonight, beat the Reds. The streak ends for the Cardinals, by the way, tonight. You know, they'd homer they 25 homer? straight games, tying the Padres. And the Rockies turn this over. High throw, but DJ handled it at 6 4. And they do get the 6 4 3 double play. They lost 4 to 3. The Pirates did not homer. 5 3, San Francisco. Murphy up first.
Here's our Cooney Lexus look back. Jorge De La Rosa gave up a two-run shot to Brandon Belt at the time and made it three to one San Francisco. It ended an 0 for 18 slide for Belt. And then Gorky Hernandez on his 29th birthday had a double his first at bat, a solo home run in his second at bat. But then the Rockies would get within a run. David Dahl went second deck. And Tommy Murphy coming up right behind him. Hit one deep into the night. His second home run since his call up. Giants got a run back. They lead it five to three. That's our Cooney Lexus look back. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Mark Stout from Coors Field. And Murphy's at the plate right now, the seventh against hard throwing Hunter Strickland. The first fastball at 97. That's what he averages. He will touch triple digits. Slider is going to be 85 miles an hour. Bruce Bochy's tried to limit the game for Hunter Strickland, but he just keeps calling on him 65 appearances now. Ball and a strike. Right, he's hitting 195 against Strickland over the last 17 ball games. Sliders outside. He's only given up 12 hits at that time. Two strikes on Murphy. Grew up and lives north of Syracuse, New York. About a half hour north, West Monroe, New York. And I'll tell you what, he's kidding him today. He said, Is there any snow on the ground yet? He said, There could be. Smile. It's up in your neck of the woods where you went to college. Yeah, that's even further up, right? That's, that's even further north. Flowers North of Ithaca. Freshman year, Huey, the uh, lot that the freshman had to park in was to my dorm was about three quarters of a mile. <laughs> Got a lot of parking tickets. <laughs> you? I know that shocks you. Uh -huh. Not obeying the rules? Wow, well, it was cold, man. It's like. Parking ticket or freeze or your butt bike. off and trying to run through uh, that. And it, every time you move, it throws your face even more. Three and two. A couple of days like that in Laramie? Yeah, you're, you're familiar <laughs> with that. Got to get anchored down in Laramie. Watch the football team practice once and all the DBs got blown away. <laughs> It'd be a defensive lineman to stay put. Honor Strickland on the Subaru strike zone. In and out. Nothing right over the heart. Three balls, two strikes on Murphy. Ardulo's on deck. Fastball. Here's tonight's league alerts by Bank of America. We touched on this earlier. Atlanta's leading Washington three to one. But the story there is that Steven Strasburg lasted just uh, a little more than two innings through 42 pitches, and then had to depart. Disclosure yet of what the injury was that forced him to leave. Gave up a run on two hits at two and a third, struck out four, didn't walk anybody. Actually, 
when he left leading one nothing got painted a little bit. Cardulo takes a strike one and one. Again, all of a sudden the Yankees with all those uh, kids. Trade away Chapman. They trade away Andrew Miller. You know, we're gonna rebuild. And they sneak into the uh, conversation. It's found off by Cordulo. They're they're very much in the conversation. In a wild card. Well, they're four and a half games back in the division. Now there's three teams ahead of them. So, it's a competitive division that American League East. Put that from Cardulo. Night for Brian Dozier, the twins. He went one for four. He did not home. 39 home runs on the season for Dozier, second in the American League. He's hit what 24 in the second half. Yeah, a three homer night two nights ago, three nights ago. Boy, Strickland is. Deliberate, isn't he? Yeah, working at a betting court pace. He's got another strikeout. This fastball at 98. Live Rockies baseball is here with MLB.com and Bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live stats, news, and more. Also fouls that back. It's 0 and 1. Two outs, nobody on. Christian Adamas has come out in the on deck circle. Bullpen for Colorado. Jordan Lyles is up again. This time he's joined by Chad Qualls. I don't know if Christian will hit here if Descalso <laughs> reaches. The two outs, Wolf may, you know, with the larger bench, may use more of a one swing guy. Take a shot at somebody hit one of the gabber in the seats. We've got Jordan Patterson. Has that ability to be making his major league debut. I'm not saying that no. Christian wouldn't hit necessarily, but it's a thought. Charlie Blackman's Charlie Blackman. probably available to swing the bat. And just for that reason, Will Smith, the left hander up for the Giants, their left handed guy. Well, Bochi's got all those arms, and you know he is notorious for using his bullpen, and he'll, and he'll match up late ball games. Three pitchers for three hitters. And now he's got, you know, a multitude of options. He's going to make sure he's ready for anything Walt Weiss throws out. Three and two. There's Will Smith. Third of an inning last night. And a walk and a strikeout. Started the eighth inning for the Giants. Three and two on Daniel. And 
that's lined right to Crawford. He makes the backhanded stab. A 1 2 3 seventh inning for Strickland. The giant bullpen has been spotless so far. Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Course field, top of the eighth inning, starting to get real late. The Rockies down five to three. Hunter Pence against Justin Miller. Second inning work for Miller. Pence tonight, an infield hit, a ground ball to third, and an RBI double to deep left center. Pence out of the University of Texas Arlington uses that wrap on his bat. More players do that today than he's got the the green colored wrap today. Yesterday he had the orange. Well, if you're going to go with a wrap, you might as well uh, change it up, and express yourself a little <laughs> bit. Guys didn't do that when you no, played. No, not at all. Pence is the most awkwardly gifted athlete I've ever seen. Gregory, I, I know you say that with, with great respect, and I think it is, I think it's a very fair appraisal. He is a very gifted athlete, and most of the things he does on a baseball field, though he does them well, you would even, teach how he does them. And, and even his warm-up swing when he's on the on-deck circle is real different. It's, he's, he's funky. He, he is, but it's it's unique and it works for him. I'll tell you what, he is some kind of strong. Two one inside, three and one. Had a couple of guys in the Giants organization tell me that he is the most relentlessly optimistic person that they've ever been around. Well, he'd be talking in the dugout. He'd give that pregame speech prior to the playoffs in the World Series. Awkwardly gifted here on this swing. Leg kick quick. Bat coming through. Helmet flying off. He catches it. Puts it back on. His throwing motion in the outfield. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. He wouldn't teach it. But he has a strong arm. Yes. 3 2, back up the middle, and a base hit for Pence. Three hit night for Hunter Pence. And the tenth hit of the night overall for the Giants. The Giants had eight hits last night. And he gets a slider that just didn't do anything. Look at where that pitch is across. Then starts to fly open. Keeps the barrel right back up the box.
Here's Hernandez. First pitch to Gorkis is strike on the strike. I'm all on the check swing. With a couple left handers at Belton Crawford following Hernandez, Jake McGee. Ready to go for the Rockies. So this more than likely is the last hitter for Justin Miller. He offered at it. Two strikes the count. It's a little perplexing with you. I already have one strike. You're up by two runs. That was it. That was try to bunt for a base hit. Out of Hernandez. One out, and now you got the lefties coming up, so I'm sure Walt's going to come on out and bring in McGee. So Miller will go one and a third, responsible for Hunter Pence at first with the Giants ahead five to three. Three, one out in the eighth inning. Brandon Bell will face Jake McGee here momentarily. Let's check our Kubota pitching performance. Two starters, Albert Suarez, making his ninth start of the year. And he's done what he seems to uh, do every time he gets the baseball. He doesn't go deep, but he doesn't give a, a ton of runs. Three runs in five innings. De La Rosa was touched for five runs in six innings. They were giving up a couple of home runs tonight. One of the home runs he gave up was to this man, Bell. If you look at Jake McGee's resume this year. Been pitching better of late. Last 17 games, 1 0 with the 270 ERA. But one of the issues, we've talked about the lack of a velocity compared to other years. But left handers this year are hitting Jake at a 296 clip. Whereas from 2010 to 2015, it was 224. So 72 points higher this year. One ball, one strike. That fastball is at 88 miles an hour. This was a slider. That's what. Gonna 
the sneak pass to diving Nolan Arenado for a hit. And now they're two on. Bell to second hit of the night. He also has walked. Are you playing the shift? Nolan's off the line. And then a jam shot. This is that by a foot. Just out of the reach on the Subaru Super Mo. 92 mile an hour fastball. Breaks the bat of Brandon Belt. He gets his second hit of the evening. for to double and two strikeouts. Curveball misses. One and two on Crawford. Five three. Giants leading. They've out hit the Rockies eleven to six. Okay. Yeah, and everything going on. Towel, the finger, the hat. He bought out the uh, giant souvenir shop. But he's not as enthusiastic. No. Not having it. For five for his last 29 at the plate. One four career against Jake. Five runs has to feel unusual for the Giants. They had <laughs> had scored just 13 in the last six games and another strikeout. McGee. With a slider to strike out Brandon Crawford. Two outs in the inning, and that'll bring up Tomlinson. The day after every Rockies win, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. Use the promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. Tomlinson a single in the fourth inning, one for three. Tom Murphy coming out. Just make it sure where they're going to throw the baseball if Hunter Pence takes off at second base. I think that'll happen. Hunter tried to take off earlier in the game, got halfway to second base, put on the brakes, tried to put it in reverse, and tried to undo what he had yeah. started. Tomlinson hits this one late and foul. Rockies next inning will have a pinch hitter and at the top of the order. Just peeking out at the bullpen for San Francisco. It's still Will Smith. You're talking about the, the, the runs for the Giants at five tonight. They'd come into the game in the second half scoring only 182 runs, which was tied for 28th in the major leagues. When in the first half, they were fourth in the major leagues in run score. Big drop off. That's a base hit. Cargo coming to get the baseball. Pence around third, gets a stop sign. 
Fargo, a perfect one-hop throw to Murphy. Wasn't that gorgeous? Working behind the ball. Pitts got a good jump, but it was the arm of Cargo that made Roberto Kelly put up the stop sign. Pence, secondary lead, he takes off, he's rounding, but right now, Cargo gets the ball, Pence is not to third base. And Cargo, okay, gets the transfer, and then loads up, and here it comes. If you put that on the hill, that's still 90 plus, maybe even 95. Did he, have a, did he have one at 100 earlier this year, close to it? I think it was close to it. From the outfield? I know he's had several 95-plus. When he was signed out of Venezuela, there were scouts that wanted to sign him as a pitcher. And he's like, no, I'm going as a hitter. <laughs> he knew what, he knew what he was. Yeah, he knew where his future was. A. Ray Adrianza is going to be the pinch hitter in the ninth spot. Bases loaded, two outs. McGee trying to keep the Rockies within two. Giants three for nine with runners in scoring position tonight on the season, 249 as a club. Way outside. Loaded three singles. No runs though. 5 3. Giants ahead as we go to the bottom of the eighth at Coors Field. Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get you two for one club level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. Rockies would like their offense to take flight. Last night they didn't have a hit after the fifth inning. And here as they come to bat in the eighth inning, trailing by two. They have not had a hit since the fourth inning. The last hit was a Tommy Murphy home run. 9 1 and 2 for the Rockies, thus the pinch hitter Ryan Rayburn against Will Smith. A Ray Adrianta stays in the ballgame. He's in second. Kelby Tomlinson has come out. 
Michael Smith, 43 games on the season. But here with San Francisco, he's doesn't have the success that he had over at Milwaukee. This pitch found off by Rayburn. 16 games with San Francisco, 0 and 1 with the 491 for Will Smith and a 256 batting average against. This is 52 games earlier this year with the right knee sprain. Rayburn started on Monday night against Matt Moore. He only lasted a couple of innings, though. He found the ball off his foot. This ball's crushed to center field, and it is caught out there by Hernandez. That's I'll a say heck it of a again. Break. He's played a great center field in this series. Well, he knows that he has to get on his horse. Now, he's playing in right, in right center field a little bit. So when he turns, he doesn't have to completely turn away and run to a spot. He's able to keep his eye on that. Will Smith is happy that he did get the break on that because the ball was smoked. Line down the left field line, but foul off the bat of Rondell Tapia. Mello for two and a walk, one and one count. Rockies have both Lyles and Ottavino up. He's off the Rockies, can tie it up or move ahead, obviously. The Giants have Sergio Romo. I would have to think he would be for DJ. Two strikes on Tapia. Unless Tapia doesn't reach base, then maybe he lets Will Smith pitch the DJ with Cargo following DJ. Two gone. Nope. My first option and thought was right. He's going to get Romo for DJ. So Will Smith gets the two hitters he was assigned to. Nobody on, two outs, 5-3.
ball game five to three in the bottom of the eighth inning with a couple outs. You want to bring your groups of 25 or more out for the final fireworks game of the season on Friday, September 30th. Tickets are still available by calling 303 Rockies today. You don't want to miss out. It's the best fireworks around. Well, this is the ageless wonder for the Giants. It's Sergio Romo out on the hill again. So every time you turn around, it looks like he's out there. He was out almost in the same situation last night in the eighth inning when he came on to face DJ. That was the only hitter he faced. DJ popped up to second base. Slider, slider, and then I'll show you the fastball to get back to the slider. LeMay, who held hitless so far. Murphy, two for four tonight for the Nats, so he's a couple points ahead in that batting race. Top two hitters in the National League. Romo's in for one hitter. <laughs> Yeah, because they got Lopez, the left-hander, up in their pen for the next hit. Cargo could have told you that uh -huh. this afternoon when he drove <laughs> to the ballpark. Well, sometime tonight I'm going to have to face Javi Lopez. Faced him last night. Ooh. One and two. Sergio drafted out of what was then called Mesa State. It's now Colorado Mesa University. Terrific Division II program. Doesn't, doesn't matter what Grand you call Junction. it. It's a top Division II program. It is that. They're always hunting that title. And a base hit for LeMahieu. That'll get the tied run up in cargo. Boshi's going to get a little more exercise here. DJ is three for 13 with this base hit against Romo. That wasn't a bad pitch. DJ just a little bit better job reaching out for it and hit another line drive to left field. Going to recompute that average. Javi Lopez coming in. So Carlos Gonzalez, one for three tonight, will come up. DJ just singled, and Cargo will face his old nemesis, Javier Lopez. Four for 24 career against Javi. And just like Sergio Romo and DJ, they matched up last night. Tonight, DJ did it, but he got a base hit. Last night, Cargo grounded out four to three. 
Robin Lopez was on the hill. So tonight, different story. 39-year-old Javi Lopez. Pitch for the Rockies, 03, 04, part of 05. For Cargo. Not to the Rockies organization. Trying to do what Jesse Orozco did. Pitch forever. <laughs> yeah. One out. Lopez ended up getting the win last night. Two and one. This is his 831st career game. And you know what? It was his first win of the year. It was his 30th win of his career. So most of the time, he's coming in to face one, maybe two guys. But he only had only, I say, 530 innings pitched out of those 831 appearances. Count in Cargo's favor. Ground ball. He's good at what he does. He gets lefties out. We go to the ninth. It remains a two-run lead for the Giants. It's time to wake up the bats, wake Jenny. Wake up the bats. I like that. That's because the Rockies only have seven hits tonight. Five to three. The Giants lead the Rockies heading to the top of the ninth pair. Wake up the bats. What What's the name it? of that bat? Um, Baseball? Come no. On. I see what you did there, though. Okay. I really appreciate that. Uh, one inning left. A rally would be nice for the Rockies. They really didn't get that so far this series. No, they haven't. And you said seven hits. They've only had one in the last four innings. Yep. I was rooting for eight innings of offense. Now it comes down to just needing one in the ninth. I like it, though, because the Giants have had plenty of opportunities to put the Rockies away. They're three for 10 today with runners in scoring position, seven left on base. The Rockies have only had two runners in scoring position, but they've held on long enough to give the Rockies a chance if he can hold on to this inning. Yeah. All right, ninth inning rally. We're asking for it. Drew, Jeff, why don't you call it? I, I like that. They need it. But first, it's going to be up to Jordan Lyles to keep this ball game at five to three. Can't allow them to tack on any more runs. First Jordan. guy up is Eduardo Nunez, representing the top of the order. And he promptly hits one on the ground at Descalso. <laughs> Throws across to Cardulo, one out. Jordan, two thirds of an inning last night, came in at the top of the eighth. Ground ball to Nunez, and then a, a easy put out at first by Angel Pagan. Yeah. 
Angel Pagan at the plate. Walked his last time up, otherwise 0 for 3. And it's going to be 0 for 4. Two, two pitches, pitches, two, two outs. outs. That works. Well, you're supposed to say thanks. I got to take a pitch now. He takes a strike. Rockies in the ninth inning. We'll have Arnado, Dahl, and Murphy. And it will be Santiago Casilla again. Rockies have been out hit 12 to 7. They had only four hits last night. Hard ground ball down the right field line. Cargo trying to prevent Posey from turning it into a double. Here's the throw to second, and it's offline. So Buster Posey with his second hit of the night. It's a two out double in the ninth in front of Hunter Pence. Just reaches out, pokes it down the right field line. Buster Posey, so adapted just using the whole field. Might have been a tad tardy on the swing. Everything's in front of him. Knows Cargo's arm. Still hustles in the second for a double. Slider's a strike. out and put it both sliders in a better place on the Subaru strike zone than he did the first two this to Hunter Pence three hit night for Pence Miller ahead 0 and 2 said Miller Lyles ahead one and two. And Jordan gets ground ball. So we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Rockies deficient on the scoreboard by a pair of runs. Nolan Arenado will lead it off. You'll see Santiago Casilla.
never had a lead tonight. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more in a ball game. Santiago Casilla with 31 saves, including one last night, is on the mound at Coors Field. Last night in the ninth inning, he faced Nolan Arenado, David Dahl, and Gerardo Parra. Tonight he'll face Nolan Arenado, David Dahl, <laughs> and Tommy Murphy. Nolan had the deep fly out last night to right. Dahl walked, and then there was a double play off the bat of Parra. Casilla also has the seven blown saves. Second. The Rockies offense in the second well, half of these last two games has been dormant. And I think back to what Corey was saying on the, on the pregame show about what he was rooting for is eight innings worth of offense. And, you know, you, you think back to Monday, they had one base hit after the third inning. A couple walks last night, one base hit after the fourth inning. Tonight, same thing, just one base hit after the fourth inning. But that can all change right here. Need another walk off here. Create some traffic first. Arnado one for three. His hit was in the first inning when the Rockies with two outs put three hits together. And a double down the left field line. He takes strike one. Casilla basically took over the closer spot a few years ago when Sergio Romo was bounced out of it. And the team that knocked Sergio Romo from his seat as the closer of the Giants was the Rockies. Rockies. They got after him big time that year. Bruce Bochy said, I've seen enough. See ya, you're my closer. The outer edge, and it's 0 and 2. Strikes on Nolan. Oh. Out of play. That year we were talking about with Sergio Romo, 2014, Drew, 11 games. He was just one for four in save opportunities. Rockies hit 400 against him, and he had an ERA of 12. That'll get you bounced. That'll get you moved out of the ninth inning roll. David Dahl, who swung it well tonight, is on deck. This ball's well hit left center field. Way back, and it's a one run game. Number 37 for Arenado. That's the start you're looking for. It took five pitches for Nolan to finally get the pitch he liked. First pitch was a slider. Says, I'm not looking for a slider first pitch, even if it's called a strike. Second pitch, 93 mile an hour fastball. Thought it was out, it was called a strike, and a slider down and away at 89. Fouls this one straight back. Top of the zone at 94. And then, how about a split slider? Split meaning it was split in the plate right at the belt. 37 home runs, 118 RBI. Just moved ahead of Chris Bryant for the National League lead in home runs with 37. Let's take another look at this. He's done this a number of times in his career against the Giants and against a lot of people.
1 0 on Dahl, who's hit a home run tonight. Out that one off his leg. It's a ball and a strike. Nolan with his 118th RBI, 20 more ribbies than anybody else in the National League. Nolan played every game against the Giants. <laughs> he, you know, listen, he, he torments the Giants. He torments the whole NL West, though. That's who you want to do it against. All the games you play, 18, 19 games against your division rivals. 22 RBIs this year against the Giants. Three home runs against the NOS since last year. Ooh, a swing. And 125 RBIs. That's crazy. Got 125 RBIs in the division alone <laughs> since the start of 2015. That's why his name is mentioned in the MVP talk. Nobody out, it's a one run game. Get on, That's manufacture right. a run. It changes. Getting changes. that lead off home run changes the complexion of the inning. How you can play it. But you gotta get a base runner. David Dahls fouling off Casilla slider. No one trying to chase his own. Personal record against the Giants set last year tied Preston Wilson 24 ribbies against the Giants in one year and Bernie Jeremy Burnett's strike zone and all the sliders down and in and then they backdoor one on it. Huge first out for Casilla back in the fourth inning. Tom Murphy second home run of the year the solo shot. 17 rows deep. Out of the University of Buffalo. Outside. Well, it's a one run game now, again. Giants 26 and 23, the Rockies just 9 and 18. Buckler. Murphy lines it to center field, a base hit. Murphy with a one out single. The Rockies will have to get a runner for Murphy. We had the knee buckler, the pitch before. They threw the slider, he backed up. Not this time. The slider. He doesn't back up on it, he hits it to center field. Now we get a pitch hit of Charlie Blackman. The hit for Cardula. And you'll also get Pat Baleka, who made his major league debut yesterday as a pinch runner. And he's going to pinch run here with one out in the ninth inning for Murphy. He pinch ran in the ninth inning yesterday. <laughs> Roach is going out. 
bringing the left-hander in. Gonna bring in the hard throwing left-hander Josh Osich. Your attention. So he's gonna piecemeal the ninth now in a one-run game. Plot thickens, the Giants now a one run lead after the home run by Arenado leading off the inning. After the David Dahl strikeout, Murphy singled, Pat Vallejo's now running for him. And instead of letting your closer go with all the arms down there, with some of the issues with blown saves for Casilla, Bruce Bochy goes and brings in Josh Osich to face Charlie Blackman making his first appearance in five days. For Josh, lefty's hitting 130 off of him. A couple home runs, and that came courtesy of Cargo. It's time to change it up for Charlie against Josh. In the previous matchups, Josh has won. Charlie's 0 for 6. Change that up right now, Miss Blackman. Nick Conley has a bat and a helmet on. He'll pinch hit for Discalso. You would think. Daniels on deck. The Rockies do not have another right handed bat available other than Adamas, who is a switch hitter. Justin Garneau would be the other guy. Mark Reynolds, if you're wondering, he's not with the club right now. His wife gave birth to a baby boy yesterday. That's part of the reason why he didn't go in late in the game last night for defense. He'll join the club on the West Coast. But congratulations to the Reynolds, their third little boy. One and one on Charlie. Time granted by Chris Caccioni. Everybody in the ballpark could hear that. Osich has never had a major league save. This year, Charlie has been hit by a pitch. So Descalso's called back in Hundley. But now that he's been announced, take a look at some of the numbers for Nick. Home runs. You name it. 294 on the home stand, leading the team with the three home runs and the eight RBIs. 
after Nick was announced. Bruce Bochy will make that walk back out again. Go to his bullpen and bring in the veteran right-hander, the 41-year-old Joe Nathan. Your attention, now for the you know it's September. One out, two on. And Nick Huntley's going to pinch hit for Daniel Descalso. And he's going to get the 41 year old Joe Nathan, who's actually throwing the ball very well. It'll be just the fifth appearance for Joe Nathan. Back from injury. Joe made his debut for the San Francisco Giants way back in 1999. He was a starting pitcher back then. He beat the Florida Marlins in his debut with seven shutout innings. Well, he was drafted as a shortstop in 1995. Two time Tommy John surgery guy. 377 career saves, 16 major league seasons for Joe Nathan. Pitched in just one game last year with Detroit. His last full season was 2014 with the Tigers. And he had 35 saves. So Joe Nathan, who's still touching 94 with his fastball, he inherits two runners on, trying to protect a one run lead. Nick Huntley's trying to please the home folks. He has been hot. Outside ball one. Joe Nathan originally drafted out of Stony Brook out on Long Island. Lake at second, Blackman at first, so good speed on. And the outfield is backed they're, up. They're deep out there. A lot of, lot of green grass. And that's well off the plate. The Thomas is in the on deck circle. The pitcher spot is up next. Rockies could tie it up. Adamas will be in the game regardless at shortstop. You would think, though Pat Vallejo, I should mention, plays short also. It's a tall <laughs> order to put a rookie in and then make sure they get the year at yeah. shortstop. Well, first things first, let's not worry about that. Go ahead and have a walk off. That's right. Have a happy flight. 2 0. Called strike. Good decision to. Not swing at that. The ball was down. Obviously, Nick's looking for something up he can drive. And especially after the first two pitches from Nathan were way out of the zone on sliders. Don't get overly aggressive. You see pitches one and two on the Subaru strike zone. And even pitch three is not a pitch you're going to swing at 2 0. Fastball from Nick. And Nick 
backs out. Nick drives this ball to center field. It's shallow coming on. Is Pagan can't make the catch. Throw to second, not in time for the force, and the bases are loaded. Well, that's what you get when you're playing no doubles. That little blooper, that bleeder, it's, it hung up there for so long, though. I thought maybe it was going to hang up too long. You got the center fielder Hernandez playing deep. Angel Pagan motoring in. Never catch it. Goes sliding by. Misses it by the. Oh, it goes off the end of his glove. The Subaru Super Mo. And then the hustle from Palenka, but the hustle from Charlie to get into second base. Nick Conley coming through with his first pinch hit this year. So Christian Adamas, a chance to play hero. One out, bases loaded, tying run at third, winning run at second. And Adamas has had a great homestand. Eight for 16. He's come alive with the bat. And if you're Stu Cole on any base hit, you're going. You're going to challenge the outfield arms for the Giants. This kind of victory, if the Rockies can produce it, has been so elusive this year. It all started with the home run to lead off this inning by Nolan on a one-two pitch. There's your the guy that started this whole thing when you're down by two. Just two walk-off wins this year, the Rockies have watched the opponent walk off Colorado six times. Here's the 1-0. Finally, the Giants bullpen is empty. There are other guys down there, but nobody's <laughs> warming up. They still have six guys out in their bullpen. Four right-handers, two left-handers. Ochi's going to live and die with the 41-year-old Joe Nathan. One one. Drive to deep right. Pence going back. It is over his head. Christian Adamas has won it. Christian Adamas with a walk-off double. How do you like that? I got goosebumps. It's exciting. A week ago, not the most likely candidate to be at the bottom of the dog pile. What an inning this has been. Contributions from everybody. Nolan, Tom Murphy with the base hit. Charlie Blackman coming off after not playing for three or four days with the bad back. He gets hit by a pitch. And then Christian Adamas comes through with a huge blast to right field. Turns on this off the auxiliary scoreboard. 14th hit, pinch hitting, fourth RBI. And will it ever be a happy flight down to San Diego tonight? You betcha. Good for Christian, good for the Rockies. They had nothing going offensively since the fourth inning. And they produced three runs in the ninth. And an unlikely win, but a great win for Colorado as we go field level. Here's Mark Stout. Mark?
It is all smiles down here. Tell me about the hit that you just got, Christian. No, just looking something up yeah. and try to turn the ass to tie the, the game, but he told me a good pitch and... <laughs> that is well deserved. Something up, you just yeah, wanted to get in the air. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's not it. What did you know about Joe Nathan? Because he's been around a long time. Yeah, I know. First of all, I was watching yeah. uh, the video. <laughs> that was a miss hit by Tony. You watched some video. I was watching some video and then I, he, got, he got good foul, 92, 93. Uh, so tried to hit the ball in the front and uh, look something up. Congratulations. Thank Great you. job. Enjoy the flight. Big <laughs> win. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. You know what? I couldn't be happier for Christian Adamas, and I know you feel the yeah. exact same way. We talked to him quite a bit, and, and the one thing that's so consistent about Christian is every single day he's got this beautiful, broad smile on his face. I saw you put your arm around him yeah. today yeah. around yeah. the batting cage, and, and he turns into a hero late at night. Well, and good for him because it, it's a tough role when you're that utility guy, and, and you, you're playing some, but you're not playing a whole lot. And then Trevor goes down, you get a chance to do more. You don't hit then. And then Daniel plays. So it's a really tough role that he's been asked to do as a, as a young guy, but coming through. And, and, and when I put my arm around, all I was saying is, you know, make sure you have fun this last month. Finish strong. And he goes, I know. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep doing my thing. Because I've been in that role before, and, I, and I'm really proud of him tonight. Yep. He, you know, there were a couple other times he had the batting gloves on tonight. Didn't know if his number was going to be called. It was called late. And he came through just the third walk-off win this year for the Colorado. Rockies, we take a look at our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. He got the barrel head out, and he drove it off the scoreboard in right, and he could celebrate because he knew that it was going to be a winner. Charlie Blackman follows Pat Valenka to the plate, and the Rockies take two or three from San Francisco. They finish the homestand five and four, and it indeed will be a happy late flight to San Diego tonight. The Rockies six, the Giants five. The winning pitcher, Jordan Lyles. Osage takes the loss. Here's Jenny. They ran out of things in the dugout to throw it. Christian, it's out. We're going to have some fun. Coming up on the Toronto Post Game Show, I'm a little scared someone might get hurt. They did finally get water on Christian Adamas, though. What a walk-off win for the Rockies. We'll be right back.